This is Twit. The Wikimedia Foundation has put out uh, a bit of news about the AI strategy uh, for Wikipedia. And I was hoping that you could start by giving us kind of a high level overview of this strategy and how it fits into the long term mission of Wikipedia. Happy to do that. Uh, indeed, we have decided to um, put out a new AI strategy. And in this new AI strategy, we are focusing our attention on reinvesting on the humans behind Wikipedia. Um, the community of volunteers behind Wikipedia are the people who are the most unique element of the success for Wikipedia. Wikipedia is a project that for almost 25 years have been developed and cared for by these pe people and has mm -hmm. become a central part of our lives on the internet and web in a variety of ways, whether we come to Wikipedia directly or use its content or knowledge through other platforms. In the Wikimedia Foundation, we decided to invest on more heavily with supporting these editors with AI. More specifically, we decided to invest, uh, do a targeted investment in four areas to support the editors. One is to support the work of moderators and patrollers to assure the integrity of knowledge on the projects. The other one is to focus on any task that is basically repetitive and is required and does not require human judgment. It's basically a barrier for editors for doing the work that they're trying to achieve. We also decided to focus on investing in AI for reducing the burden on editors for creating knowledge that already exists in on Wikipedia in a given language, uh, and perhaps giving them pathways to bring their local perspective and knowledge to the world. Mm -hmm. And lastly, using AI to uh, help the next generation of editors to become editors on Wikipedia through mentorship and assisted mentorship and helping them get onboarded to the projects. These are kind of the four primary areas that we would like to invest in AI in support of the editors on the projects with, again, like a primary focus to be on the human agency and the editors being on the projects and supporting that. Absolutely. Now, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the public anxiety that exists around AI uh, replacing in some ways human creators and editors. So I'd love to hear you talk about how this strategy reaffirms the role of Wikipedia's volunteer community in this age of generative AI, that, that the humans are first, as you've, you've mentioned, um, to hear about how that actually plays out uh, would be great. Yeah. Um, so the primary thesis of the strategy is that we are investing, reinvesting, and focusing heavily on editors as humans who are behind knowledge. Really, the reason for this is knowledge is socially constructed and humans are needed for creating knowledge. At the same time, we understand that there are a lot of repetitive tasks, tasks that do not require human judgment that are happening on Wikipedia with by our editors. So we want to invest in AI in areas that human judgments, deliberation, discussion, and consensus building is not needed and leave more time for people to do the things that people are best at, if they choose to do so. Um, so that's basically the primary thesis for us, which is invest in humans, reduce, give them the option to in invest less time in areas that their AI can help them with, and then in instead give them more time for things that are very uniquely human, which is around deliberation, consensus building, and discussion. Understood. Now, the foundation highlights AI-assisted workflows for moderators and patrollers. Um, I'd love to hear kind of some nitty gritty. What kind of tasks are you hoping to automate and how will that support content integrity on the platform? Yeah. Our moderators and patrollers are key to the success of Wikipedia. These are the people who make sure that the content in Wikipedia is meeting the the policies that the communities, the content policies that the communities have put together. Um, what we are primarily focusing on in this space is saying that 
these individuals are handling a lot of repetitive tasks on the projects. And we know that AI can assist them in some of these repetitive tasks that don't require human judgment. Again, we're going back to that theme of where human judgment is not needed or much less needed. Can we introduce AI to support these editors? The other thing that I want to bring uh your audience's attention to is that, you know, Wikipedia, while many of us read it in English, Wikipedia is a like is a project that is available in many different languages. In in fact, over 300 language. And these moderators and controllers operate in all of these different languages. So what our teams eventually decide to do in terms of supporting moderators or controllers in a given language with AI also depends on the specific needs of that language. You know, the, mm. the needs of a language in which you have, um, let's say, less than 100 edits per day in, in that Wikipedia is going to be different than the needs of a language in which you have a few edits per second in, in their Wikipedia, right? And uh, the affordances that you have for offering AI. Um, to give you just one concrete example, maybe suppose you're a patroller and you want to upload, um, you want to update information related to a reference that is being used uh, currently on a Wikipedia article. Um, if you want to find all Wikipedia articles that are currently using this reference, this is a hard task right now. But the task of retrieval and discovery is something that we can support patrollers with and moderators with. So this is one area that we think AI can actually help moderators more effectively pull information that is already available and do their work more effectively on the projects. Understood. Now, one interesting aspect with, and you talk about this a little bit, the AI-assisted translation to help editors share local perspectives more broadly. I'd love to hear, uh, you know, the goals of this feature, and most importantly, because there's that AI anxiety again of sort of stripping the uh, the human context out of things. How do you ensure the cultural context is preserved in translation? Yeah. Excellent question. And this is a topic that, as you may imagine, we care deeply uh, about. So I, um, the way I, a few things I can share here is that one, again, going back to the thesis of this strategy, strategy, the focus is on humans and bringing AI in places where humans can do their job, support humans to do their job better on the projects or more effectively on the projects if they choose to. So when we talk about the translation, it is still in the context of that primary thesis, which is we mm -hmm. want to support humans. Um, so I think that's really important. Here, we are not talking about you know automatically translating content and just putting it in front of uh, people. We are talking about supporting editors for translating that content. At the same time, what we see in smaller Wikipedia languages in terms of article size is that editors are under tremendous amount of pressure for creating uh, vital knowledge, vital encyclopedic knowledge on their project before getting to the point of being able to bring their local perspective and knowledge to the projects. And this is a tension that we're trying to resolve, which is there is a list of vital articles every Wikipedia should have. Can we, for at least this list of articles, support editors with translation methods and translation power to more effectively translate and more efficiently translate this content in their languages and give them back time so that they can go and bring the knowledge that doesn't exist anywhere on the internet today because they are the people who have that knowledge and knowledge perspective. Mm -hmm. So that is the idea behind the translation component and where we talk tra about translation um, in this context. Understood. Uh, you have you being the the foundation of emphasized values like transparency, human agency, multilingual inclusion. Um, you just just hearing how those main things have played out in the decisions that you've made with AI would be great. I think once again, I know we keep pulling it back to, but this is about. You see the reaction that uh, sometimes people will have when we hear, oh, this site or this service is adding AI. Oh, no. But it sounds like there's a very thoughtful rollout that is taking place. So, yeah. Can you talk about that transparency, that human agency, that multilingual inclusion as these kind of core principles as you roll out these AI tools and maybe how you're continuing to check in on those principles being followed uh, with this? Yeah. 
um, this is a topic that is dear to our heart, and that's why we talk about it in the strategy as well. I'll give you maybe a couple of examples, and I'll be led by you if you want me to go through more details. One is on the topic of transparency, uh, our machine learning team has developed this concept of model cards. So every AI model that we put into production or even we propose to put in production needs to have a model card page, which is effectively a page um, which is publicly accessible. And uh, you can go and check to see what is this model? What is the motivation for creating this model? What kind of use cases we had in mind for creating this model? Who is the user that is the target uh, for this model? What are the ethical considerations that we have had for developing these models? What are the caveats that we are seeing? And all the technical details about which models we have used and what data pipelines we have used and all that. All of these are captured in model cards. Model cards are a requirement for any model going to production. And by making them a requirement, effectively our machine learning team has like, you know, built in the, the process for making sure that we have transparency around what model is going out and what do we know about the shortcomings and the great things that the model can can do. Uh, when it comes to the topic of languages, um, I think we have developed uh, some good understanding on this front, and we are still on a journey to fine tune our understanding. Our general uh, position right now is that we need to look at what are the needs of different Wikipedia languages to decide how are we going to use and if we are going to use AI in the, in all of these languages or not. Again, for some languages that are very small, we may want to use AI in certain ways and we may not want to use AI in some other ways. So mm -hmm. thinking about what is actually the need of that language and is it useful to use AI? Or maybe there are other pieces of technology that are going to be more useful given the, where the project is at that point in time. Um, the other principle that we have around multilingualism is about trying to not lock ourselves in a model that we cannot expand to more languages. So here the philosophy is being maybe if today we can't use it in 10 more languages uh, because these languages don't have need. Let's make sure we don't lock ourselves because our principle is general. We should be able to go to more languages. That's that, that's wonderful. The the model cards, I think, in particular, um, one thing about, you know, Wikipedia in particular is this aspect that kind of anything that you want to dig into and see how this was built. There's there's um, the, the I, I can't think of the word for it right now, but essentially it's all checkable. It's all able to be kind of out there in the open. And so the idea of this model card being an aspect of that is is really interesting and I think important. Um, and the, the yeah, the transparency of it is, I think, going to be somewhat refreshing in comparison to perhaps some of the other ways we've seen AI used. Um, this last question that I have for you, I am very curious to hear uh, what what your thoughts are. Um, you know, Wikipedia's content is, uh, as far as we can tell, often used to train large language models. Um, how does this strategy of of you know AI being included in the work that uh, is taking place kind of position Wikipedia and the Wikimedia Foundation in the evolving landscape of AI generated knowledge? Yeah, uh, for me there are uh, two aspects um, that I consider when I think about positioning of Wikipedia with regards to AI with the lens of uh, this strategy. One is our focus on the local perspective. I think this is something that we have tried to become really clear about. This is something that we see perhaps um, less less fewer companies or organizations currently investing in, which is bringing in the local perspectives or the local knowledge of the communities from across the globe. And there are communities that are being left behind mm -hmm. uh, with the speed at which AI companies are operating and moving. So one way that we are thinking about this AI strategy is reaffirming the importance of this local knowledge and perspective and thinking about a Wikipedia that continues to be this model for bringing encyclopedic knowledge to the internet for all of us, for whichever application we are looking at, whether it's the training an AI model or you know getting an alert on our watch about what we should be 
where we should be going next or what is the monument that is around us. Yeah. Um, the other aspect is really the human-centered uh, approach in this. Um, I think this is, again, what is differentiating the work of Wikipedia from a lot of other content that is available on the internet and web. In an internet and web that is being constantly polluted right now with machine-generated content, having this place of human-curated and cared-for content is going to be critical for all these AI models that need to uh, be constantly retrained and built. Um, and in that way, I think Wikipedia is going to play a, an important role of human curated, generated and cared for content for AI. Uh, Layla, I want to thank you so much again for taking the time to join us today to explain uh, kind of more about where the Wikimedia Foundation uh, is in terms of, of AI being used. I think that um, we've learned a lot today. Really excited to see these model cards, for example, and continue to watch this roll out. If people want to stay up to date uh, of kind of where the project is, what what they should be looking for, do you have a place that they should go to do that that we could include? Uh, for the model cards specifically, if you just search in your search engine of choice, uh, model cards, uh, machine learning team, Wikimedia Foundation, you will be landing there and you will see our model cards. And from there, you can be routed to other places. Thanks so much for watching this little chunk of Tech News Weekly. If you'd like to get the full episode, well, head over to twit.tv slash TNW. There you'll find buttons you can click or tap to subscribe to the entire show in audio and video formats. Or just look in the description. We've got links down there as well.